Hello, hello, and welcome to my 10.2 Restoration Druid Beginner's Guide, Episode 2, Cooldowns and How to Time Them, an introduction to our druid. So I want to briefly recap Episode 1, in which the main lesson, you know, if you took nothing else, is that you want to maintain your life bloom uptime through the form of, you know, the rhythm that I described, which is you life bloom one party member, you life bloom another party member, and then you drop Flow. That is like the baseline rhythm of our druid. Now, hopefully you've been practicing that over the last couple of days. And so I want to kind of go into and make a deeper dive into some of the other abilities in the Restoration Druid toolkit. And so this is going to be called, you know, cooldowns and how to time them. All right, so the first ability that I want to talk about today is Adaptive Swarm. Adaptive Swarm has a 25 second cooldown. And you are going to be weaving this into your, you know, Life Bloom, Life Bloom, Eflo rhythm because you're going to want to maintain Adaptive Swarm uptime on as, on as many targets as possible. So you don't, you always want to be using this when it's available. And so let's talk about how and why. Okay, so Adaptive Swarm. It can either be used as a damage button or as a healing button. That changes based on who you target. So I use mouse overs. I mentioned this in the first video. And that's how I would recommend that other people, you know, use um, the targeting scheme that I do. However, there that is a preference thing. So who you mouse over will determine what the target is but here's the second you know part of adaptive swarm that i really want you to pay special attention to and this is part of why i included this in the cooldown video okay so it increases the effectiveness of your periodic effects on them by them just your target by 20 percent okay this is for both hots and dots the second part, the second paragraph, upon expiration, finds a new target, preferring to alternate between friend and foe up to three times. Okay, so let's talk about this. So I'm going to just target myself because it's just me here today. I mouse over my uh, frame and it, I have it on my four key and it applies adaptive swarm. So it's going to be restoring HP every 1.4 seconds, and all my other hots are going to be increased by 20%, as long as I have this Adaptive Swarm. And here's this number here, if you, if you maybe zoom in or something, and it will show you how many stacks or how many times Adaptive Swarm can split because remember it splits after 12 seconds and it can do that up to three times and it prefers to alternate between friend and foe so if you target you know you use it on yourself first it will prefer to then jump to foes if you are in combat oppositely if you are in combat with an enemy and you cast it on the enemy, it will then try to prioritize jumping to friendlies. This is a very important concept to remember because there's a talent. And this talent is really what makes Adaptive Swarm really good. Um, and you're like every day, every key that you do, you want to use this every time it's available. And so this talent is called Unbridled Swarm. So Adaptive Swarm has a 60% chance to split into two swarms each time it jumps. This is huge. That means you're going to be spreading it, okay, to extra. And this is kind of, this goes into the concept of getting more value from every button press that you make. 
So in the first video, we talked about like, hey, you know, you press this one button, Life Bloom. Well, it's multiple mastery stacks, okay? Same same thing here. When you press Adaptive Swarm, it it's going to spread. And so you're getting more value from one button press. And it keeps increasing over time because it has the chance to spread into new targets. Okay. So, say you have a full party. How do you best decide who to use your Adaptive Swarm on? And this is absolutely amazing, and it's going to blow your mind, hopefully, like it did mine. Okay, so I'm going to open up my weak words, and I open that up with just the slash command WA. It is also, very oftentimes, just found around your minimap in one of these circles or squares, depending on, you know, your UI. I'm a default Blizzard UI enjoyer, which is a very hot take for a lot of Resto Druids, but here I am today saying that I do like the default UI. All right, so there's a weak aura that I want to point out, and what this is going to do and it's called Smart Adaptive Swarm. And I'm actually gonna pull it up on the website so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so I recommend that you import it on your own. Hopefully, you know you know how to import a weak aura. If not, it's super, super easy. You'll just copy the import string, go back to WoW, press import, and paste that code. Super, super, super easy. Okay, let's go back to the website again. And as you can see here in this display, this um, screenshot that the weak wearer has, it will show the icon over a party frame. And it looks like they're using maybe LVUI, which is fine. But it will apply to, I believe, any UI that you use. But I absolutely do know it works for the default Blizzard UI. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to get an icon that looks like this. And also it has these orange or uh, yellow lines, rather, around it. That is going to be telling you that based on the priority system that the code um, that the weak aura has, it will show you who is the best target in that moment to cast Adaptive Swarm on. And once you do cast Adaptive Swarm, it will the weak aura will uh, hide. It will not be flashing at you or have that adaptive swarm shown for the entire time. This is absolutely amazing. Like, unbelievably helpful. All right, so now I want to introduce you to the boys. You might ask yourself, Dottie, who are the boys? And let me tell you, they're one of my favorite buttons, and that is called Grove Guardians. Okay, so these work probably most like Shaman Totems, and they have about a 45-yard range, and they last 15 seconds with a 20 second recharge. That means that your uptime on Grove Guardians is very, very high. There's only gonna be about five seconds on average that you will not benefit from a stack of Grove Guardians, from a cast of Grove Guardians, and then not already have it back off of cooldown. So. That five seconds is like the window that you don't have any of the boys. All right, so 
What Grove Guardians does is it summons a Treant, will, which will immediately cast Swift Mend. Now, we haven't covered Swift Mend yet, but that is coming later in this video. And the reason why we haven't covered that yet is because Swift Mend has a one major interaction that I really need to cover more in depth, and I need to be kind of careful with the wording and how I explain this. So, uh, you know, bear with me. We'll get there. All right. So, it's going to cast Swift Mend on your target, instantly healing them. Okay, so that's like a pretty nice spot heal. After it casts its Swift Mend, it will then begin to cast Nourish on that target or a nearby ally periodically. Okay, so there's a couple things that I want to talk about, and let's let's go ahead and click the spell book like a true noob. So we summoned one of the boys. And as you can see, he's just sitting here casting Nourish. The first thing I want to point out is that this, uh, that Grove Guardians is off of the GCD. So let's see, I'm going to cast Rejuve and then instantly cast Grove Guardians. Those two things basically happened at the same time. This is amazing for our spot healing and something that you should not underestimate the power of. Okay, so there's number one. It's off of the GCD, which also means that say there's a huge damage spike incoming or, you know, one person is just taking unhealable damage like there are times that you might want to use all three at this all three charges of grove guardians at the same time i do it every now and then in my videos the reason why i might do that is maybe somebody took on like a bunch of damage that i didn't expect them to maybe i stood in a mechanic like, I didn't dodge, I didn't play well, and needed to catch up um, after running back from, you know, sadly not, you know, living. And so I might drop all three. And this is legitimately how quickly you can do this. And now, you know, these trees are just going to be absolutely pumping on that target that you're moused over or by default on yourself so do keep in mind that you do need to target to mouse over or click on the person that you're wanting to have the treants essentially prioritize okay so let's look in the talents here because there's one awesome well there's a couple of really awesome interactions here but we'll start with the wild synthesis talent and in the second paragraph because we kind of ignore the first one treants from grove guardians also cast wild growth immediately when summoned healing five allies within 40 yards for over seven seconds okay this is again huge so you can use all three at the same time. That's not a bad use. You can use one as often as possible, which is something that you should be doing because you want to use as many Grove Guardians through the entire dungeon as possible. It will really start to smooth over your healing patterns and help you do more damage because you don't have to shift out of your damage form in order to heal people. And it will just, like, it's completely changed the way that, not, like, play our druid, but man, it, I love Grove Guardians. I can't say enough how awesome I think they are. So, now, every time that you use Grove Guardians, 
it will cast wild growth. And so I'm going to use it again so we can see me get the hot from that. I'm going to, th again, drag over this like I always forget to in the beginning. So we're going to Grove Guardians. And you can see that wild growth, that I have a wild growth on me. So their wild growth, I believe, acts in the same way ours does, which means that it loses, like, the hardest hitting hot is that first second, and then it will slowly become less powerful over time until it expires. Now, I want to get into some of the particular nitty-gritty details that you do need to understand in order for to heal your allies properly, okay? So it, it's in this, like, last part of the paragraph, which will, the treant will cast Nourish on that target or a nearby ally periodically. Now, there's been a lot of testing done on this and how it exactly works, and so I'm going to do my best to summarize it and give you, you know, the, to, you know, to the best of my understanding how the target pri prioritization works. So the first thing to understand about that is if I mouse over myself and press, press Grow Guardians, it is going to prioritize healing me, okay? The second part of that is when would it prior prioritize healing someone else? And the first thing to understand about that is it will continue healing the person that you cast it on, so the person you mouse over, until they hit 100% full HP. From there, Tree, your Grove Guardian, will cast on a nearby ally that is not full health. Now, there is a huge difference between someone that is not full health and someone that is the lowest health. You have to understand that Grove Guardians is not a smart heal. So if you cast it on yourself first, and now you're at 100% HP, and you have four other party members that are below 100, so, you know, at any range, it will not automatically target the lowest health one so you cannot you cannot rely on it to always save the lowest hp person which is where you also you know come in and choose number one choose the person so be intelligent with who you're targeting when you cast it and then second, after you target, or um, after they're in play, you also have to make sure that you're kind of paying attention that the lowest HP person is not still going to die because of maybe bad RNG. Okay, so I think that that kind of covers things that you need to know about Grove Guardians in order to be well on your way to utilizing them. But the beginner's rule here, and this is super, super important with Grove Guardians, is that the only way for you to be playing and using your Grove, Gar Grove Guardians incorrectly would be for you to simply not be using them enough. So again, I'm going to repeat that. The way for you to be, be to be playing badly is for you to not use 
your grove guardians enough. In a lot of my dungeons, if you use WoW Analyzer, you can check these numbers on your own gameplay. I'm sitting at somewhere between 80 to 90% of utilization on Grove Guardians, which means out of all of the time in the dungeon, there is a, you know, that, so it's time divided by the cooldown. Essentially, that's kind of simplified since we have charges, but that I am playing... 90% of the Grove Guardians that are possible for me to play in the entire dungeon, which means I am using it almost as often as you can to be 100% uptime when it is available. All right, so... The next ability that I want to talk about is the first, you know, introduction of a defensive oriented ability that you can use on yourself or an ally, and that is Iron Bark. Iron Bark has a 1.5 minute cooldown, and it is a simple damage reduction. So the target skin becomes as tough as iron wood, reducing damage taken by 20% for 12 seconds. So this is targeted, so again, mouse over or click, and I'm going to just mouse over myself and use it. And you will simply have, I, I would simply just take 20% reduced damage. As a healer, you need to understand that the best defense the best the best healing is done when you simply just mitigate incoming damage so knowing when there's going to be big damage on a party member coming and paying attention to what cooldowns that they have will tell you when you need to use iron bark on that ally. So for instance, I want to talk about bring up Razan again in Atal Dazar. Well, there's a lot of time that you will like you know during that fight that the tank is going to be targeted by a bleed and on tyrannical even on fortified and higher keys but especially on tyrannical the tank really 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 has to match one of their own defensive cooldowns to the time in which they will start taking damage from razan's bleed now this is where you come in Okay, you could heal more damage. You could apply more HOTS. However, that is assuming that you always have the time to just apply more HOTS. This is not always the case, in which you will then say, hmm, okay, I'm going to use iron bark and time it right as Razan uses his bleed mechanic so now you essentially have to do 20 percent less healing and then you can spend more time doing other things like healing other party members if they had taken damage repositioning yourself dodging mechanics you know, the list goes on. And so again, you want to use Iron Bark on a target that you know will be taking, you know, big, huge damage 
in the next 12 seconds. Ideally, you'll want to time that right as that damage is happening, like at the very beginning, same tick, or right before it in by like a second or two. You know, that just is part of maximizing the value is being able to time it exactly as it happens. And that is a thing that you will develop the feel for in the different dungeons and know how to, and when to best utilize. Another thought for you that I want to present is the idea that, say, in trash poles, you have to ask yourself, when is the trash pole the most dangerous? And it's kind of a broad question, and there might be kind of a range of, you know, a couple of different answers. But one of the, I think one of the, the best answers is, well, when simply on pole or right or when the most mobs are still alive. Okay, so say you're playing with a blood death knight. And again, as a good resto druid, you should be tracking their runic power and kind of keeping an eye on that. So when you go, when they go into a pole, when the death knight goes into a pole, and maybe they're low runic power or none, you should be thinking, okay, what's the best way for me to support my teammate in this pole? And Death Knights will be able to mainly heal themselves, but again, they're most vulnerable when they have low runic power, and at the very beginning of poles, that they're, you know, they don't have bone shield stacks, things like that. You should be tracking these things. And so again, as an intelligent, hopefully intelligent resto druid, you're you are already knowing that this is gonna happen, you know what they're gonna pull, and so Right on pull, you give them Iron Bark and, you know, maybe Scenarian Ward and a couple Mastery Stacks so that you can smooth that damage for them and allow them to be, to get in control of their own health bar. That is super, super, super key to understand. So pay attention to your tank. Pay attention to what pulls are coming up soon. And that will be the key for you to know, hey, I can use Iron Bark on this pull. This is a dangerous pack, or this is a dangerous boss ability. And I can time this maybe to where the tank doesn't have many defensive cooldowns left. Or, like in the case of a Blood Death Knight, I can give it to them on pull so that it's they're easier to stabilize. They don't ping pong nearly as much up and down in their HP and they will absolutely love you for that and that's one of those things that as a healer you are there to help your party become successful and become more successful and so you should be actively thinking like your tank they have a lot of pressure on them they need to go make these pulls how can you best make their life easier in order to do so? Okay, so the next ability that I want to talk about is another defensive cooldown, and that is Bark Skin. So what that does, it's on a one-minute cooldown. So the first thing about any one-minute cooldown in the game is that is a very, 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 very short cooldown in terms of what it could be. There's plenty of classes that have a defensive that's on a three-minute cooldown. So what this means is that you have many more opportunities to use it. I am also kind of, you know, speaking to myself here. There's been plenty of times that I have died in a key or in raid that I did not use my defensives when I should have. Now, that's one of these things that, you know, as we become better players and like on your journey and mine on my own journey, 
that you need to be thinking, okay, so if this is 30 minutes, this key is 30 minutes, and I use bark skin one time, that is very, very, very bad usage of your defensives because they're most likely were times that you could have used it and benefited mass you know massively from because again the best healing done on any party member and this includes yourself is healing that you don't have to do because you mitigated that damage okay so bark skin one minute cooldown use it when you're about to take damage and use it as many times as you can and again i'm speaking to the choir here so your skin becomes as tough as bark, reducing all damage you take by 20%, massive, and preventing damage from delaying your spell casts last 8 seconds. This is also usable while stunned, frozen, incapacitated, feared, or asleep, and in all shapeshift forms. Okay, so there's really not much of an excuse that you should not use that when you die. There's really not too much more to say about that other than like, hey, mechanic is on me. Mechanic hurts very badly. Bark skin. Period. Okay. In the talents here, in the default build, which I'm going to switch over to, real quick there is a talent here which is pretty darn good so it's called matted fur and when you use bark skin or survival instincts which resto druids don't have you will absorb damage for eight seconds again this takes i mean this is like a super nice like ability like and there's times that matted fur has saved me because i just needed that extra little bit of absorb for to mitigate enough damage that the mechanic doesn't one shot me so use it before damage happens like before damage is before you're hit because you'll mitigate it because again a lot of times if you've already been hit by the mechanic and not like you've already taken the damage and then you use a defensive cooldown it is a wasted defensive cooldown the thing that you have to understand about defensive cooldowns is the best usage is before the damage happens so i see bad thing about to happen to me skin bark skin and then you live now i would like to introduce an ability called flourish and with Flourish comes a Restoration Druid concept that also, say, Discipline Priests have this kind of same concept, which is called a Ramp. And in order to properly use your Flourish, you have to understand how to properly Ramp. So what Ramp means in terms of Resto Druid is basically making sure that your whole party or as many people as possible are currently benefiting from having hots on them so for instance if i wanted to ramp on myself say i could life bloom f low maybe i'll use this proc regrowth proc i sent a rejuve wild growth adaptive swarm flourish so that that that's kind of an example of what a ramp could look like now that same concept 
can be extended to an entire group, so in Mythic Plus, and also to an entire raid. So let's get into what Flourish does. All right, so Flourish is a talent, by the way. You talent into it right here in on this choice node. And so far in Dragonflight, I don't know if this is different in PvP, but you've ne I've never seen or heard of really anyone using Verdant and Fusion. So Flourish. Um, it extends the duration of all of your heal over time effects on friendly targets within 60 yards by 6 seconds and increases the rate of your heal over time effects by 25% for 6 seconds. Okay, so let's talk about, again, the most important thing here. I want you to associate, associate your flourish with the concept of ramping. So, here's how to not use Flourish, which is, oh great, I have it available, use, and then start hotting. This is literally the value of Flourish there is essentially zero. It really did not do anything at all whatsoever, and you just wasted a cooldown. Now, the proper way to again flourish is to ramp, which again means to have your hots on your target. So you would life bloom, rejuve, maybe, you know, whatever you have available. And again, you want to spread this on your entire party because this is a party wide increase in the healing rate of your heals on the party so we have about seven seconds to wait for three all right so let's start ramping again so when we ramp after pressing all of our abilities again it extends the duration of each one by six seconds. This is pretty huge, especially for extended AOE damage that's coming out on the party in a Mythic Plus dungeon. Very oftentimes, you will need to meet like throughput healing checks that are over, you know, five to 12 seconds. Like in Dawn of the Infinite, there's a couple, the dragons, um, that are trash, but also the boss, the... Man, I cannot remember the name of the boss in there. Looks like a blob, essentially, that turns into two dragons and then splits. So, one of the ways to counteract in the phase that it sends out all the tornadoes that you have to dodge and it pulses AoE damage is to flourish your hots, which extends them, and also increases the tick rate of those hots on your allies. So let's talk about another kind of more in-depth, you know, concept here, which is the tick rate of a hot, which does not mean that the effect expires more quickly. What it does mean is that the effect will happen more often. So when, like Flourish does not, it extends and increases the tick rate, but does not reduce the duration by making the tick rate higher on your heals. So you want to ramp, which is again, hotting up as many allies as you can and then you will extend those hots via flourish one of the things that i wanted to mention in regards to flourish that i think i will talk about later in this video is that there are certain abilities that have a higher priority on being flourished onto your allies to 
properly this idea of properly ramping and i am going to cover that more when we talk about the buff soul of the forest which is a bit more complicated so as of right now this is as far as i want to go until we cover swift mend Okay, so the next ability that I want to talk about is Nature Swiftness. And this one I'm going to go through a bit quicker because its main use cases are two, but there technically are three. So it's on a one minute cooldown, so again, you can use it pretty often. Your next regrowth, rebirth, or entangling roots is instant, free, and castable in all forms and heals for an additional 100% if you use regrowth. Okay, so there have been times I have used Nature Swiftness to make Entangling Roots instant. This was last season in Freehold. If there was not a hunter that could trap the ad spawn and the final boss in Freehold, then if I had Nature Swiftness available, I would use that to then cast entangling roots to keep the bomb the bomber from exploding on the party though that was not a very particular like i other than that i don't really use it for entangling roots other than very very niche scenarios and one-offs kind of thing okay however the other two ways to utilize this are absolutely amazing and mandatory. Okay, so the first thing is regrowth. You can use Nature Swiftness because it increases the heal of the next regrowth for an additional 100%. Uh, you can use it and then regrowth a party member. That, in my opinion, is a very good use in order to put a very sizable spot heal on someone. Okay, the other way that you can use this, that 100% will save your party from wipes, is you nature swiftness and then you rebirth, which is your battle res. Okay, so let's get into how do you do that because you will want to make a macro. This macro was not made by me, so I don't want to take credit for it, you know, like I'm some mega genius. However, you can find this macro on the Wowhead macro section in the Restoration Druid Guide. It is awesome. I would read through there. Uh, like, I would recommend that you read through there as well. But one of the f best macros that I've ever seen is this Battle Res macro. And what I'll put it in the description of this video. And what it does is basically uses your nature swiftness and then will cast rebirth at whoever you are pointing to via mouse over being able to take out the thought okay like take out the error the room for error which is i did not used to have this macro to where sometimes i would try to battle res and make it instant but I would be on GCD or I would just press the incorrect button. This macro will allow you to save your party and stay away from that really terrible position that you think you get your rebirth off. You don't and your entire group wipes because of your mistake. Using this macro will eliminate that and allow you to legitimately make key saving or at least pull saving plays by instantly resing maybe the tank that 
gets one shot or you know something happens that wasn't supposed to or you fall asleep and you are able to save the pole by instantly getting them be rezzed which will then perhaps save the entire key all right so the last ability that i'm going to cover in part two of the restoration druid beginner's guide is swift mend and swift swift mend has a 15 second cooldown and consumes one of the following hots on the target regrowth wild growth or rejuvenation so what you need to know and what you need to remember is that whenever you have hots on someone say for this example a rejuvenation when you target that person via mouse over or clicking on them swiftmend is able to be cast and it will consume that hot okay so i now have rejuvenation on myself and i can mouse over and cast swiftmend all right swiftmend activates an incredibly incredibly important buff and what that does it's called soul of the forest and it is going to empower your hots so soul of the forest the healing of your next regrowth or rejuvenation is increased by 150 percent or your next wild growth by 50 percent all right so when you use swift mend that is going to be a pretty chunky spot heal on one person it is very important that your next cast is utilizing the soul of the forest buff properly so almost always if possible you want to use swiftmend and then follow up with a wild growth almost always and there's a couple of reasons why but the increased wild growth hot is very very powerful and covers your entire party now i want to kind of jump back a little bit when i was talking to you about ramps okay so with flourish right when we need to meet a very intense healing check and we need to meet that healing check over an extended period of time it is very 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 wise for you to get so use swiftmend soul of the forest wild growth into your flourish that will extend that empowered wild growth on your entire party for that extra six seconds and it will tick faster for the first six seconds that flourish is activated this is the number one key to ramping properly on your allies and most often using wild growth when you, on your soul of the forest proc will be the best way for you to meet group healing with that said there are times that yes you might want to follow up with a very powerful spot heal on a regrowth or meet a extended 
use Soul of the Forest on a rejuvenation if you need to meet a very intense single target healing check over the full duration of rejuvenation. However, that is very few and far between, and I can't think of many reasons why you would want to necessarily empower rejuvenation even over regrowth because very often times if you do need to spot heal someone it's better to just get their hp from whatever it is currently say 30 percent all the way back you know using the empowered version to to where they're stable you know closer to 100. so almost always will you not use your soul of the forest on re uh, rejuvenation so now there is one advanced kind of topic here and that's about the consuming you know what it will consume so when you cast soul of or uh, swift mend when you cast swift mend rather on a target so I have on me both Rejuve, Regrowth, and Wild Growth. It will prioritize consuming the Regrowth. The next hot that it will prioritize is your Wild Growth. So I'm going to cast a Rejuve and a wild growth and then I'm going to swift mend and it took off the wild growth if if neither regrowth or wild growth are on a target then it will consume rejuvenation however you are okay with consuming a rejuvenation, and you are also okay with consuming the hot portion from regrowth. You do not want to consume your wild growth on a target in almost any, any circumstance that I can think of. However, if that is the only hot that is on a target and they are going to die and they need spot healing then that is the correct answer but again that is your least that is the least positive scenario for you you want to consume the hot from regrowth or the hot from rejuvenation and almost never wild growth and then also again most of your soul of the forest procs that you get from casting swift mend you will most likely want to spend those on an empowered wild growth to heal your entire party so i really appreciate everybody who made it all the way through this video and if you liked it if you learned something and you want to you know see more content of mine i would really like a i would love rather you know your support in the future by either liking the video subscribing to the channel or even just you know following up watching some of my maybe gameplay videos or whatever else i have at the time but thank you for your attention please leave any comments or questions down below and i'll do my best to answer them and if i don't have a good answer then I will do my best to seek out someone who does maybe have a better answer for you. Again, I really appreciate your time and attention, and I am I can't wait until I get done part three. So thank you very much.
Well, I think that was just a wonderful exercise into allowing me to, you know, pad my meters a little bit. There you go. Actually go, dude. How long at five minutes? Wow.